What up, it's ya boy, back with another video. Today, we're gonna talk about something that, at least if you live in America, you gotta have no matter where you live across this great state that we are in. And that, of course, is a 55 gallon tub of lube. Hold on, let me. It's actually a car. For most jobs nowadays, you're gonna have to have your own means of transportation to get to, as if you can't go to and from your workplace that you agreed to, you're probably not gonna get the job. And in America, our public transport system is got much to be desired. So, owning a car is pretty much essential for how it is, and it is necessary to get to and from grocery stores, to jobs, to your own house, to even travel really anywhere, because have you been on a Greyhound bus at all? No. So, you might have clicked this video looking at the title and thinking to yourself, wait a minute, I thought cars were a good thing. And they are, for the most part. The means that they provide is very essential, but it much in the same way that a hammer is a good investment, cars are not. They're both tools. You use a hammer to hammer a nail, you use a car to get around a place to place. And that kind of brings me to my thesis of this entire video right here. It's that cars are neither assets nor investments. See, an asset is something that you buy and you use that to potentially generate wealth from. But as with cars, you have to pay for the interest on the loans that you use to get it. You have to pay for the maintenance to keep up with the car. You have to watch your very vehicle depreciate and lose value rapidly. And in most states, you're forced to carry insurance on it. That doesn't sound like an investment to me. That sounds like a good means to lose some cash. But I mentioned depreciation earlier. So the question is, what exactly is it? In the most basic of sense, Depreciation is putting a dollar amount to how much something has been used. Basically, the older something is and more likely to break down or just not perform like it used to, the more depreciated it is. You wouldn't exactly spend full price on a stinky and potentially sticky mattress that you knew was at one of the lesser end hotels in that part of town, would you? Cars depreciate about 63% over just five years of ownership and 10% of that is the second you drive it out of the dealership. Oh, and don't think you're some sort of mastermind by leasing a car. There's a reason why people still own leasing companies today, and that's because you're actually paying for the depreciation of the car, and they still have an asset they can sell when it's all said and done. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks that will hopefully help you pay for the necessity that it is to own a car, but not lose so much money that most Americans are nowadays. If you're trying to save money, I cannot recommend enough to buy a car that is at least five years old. Now, this is sacrilege to most car lovers and everything like that. You want the hottest, newest, freshest thing off the lot. But if you get something that is five years or older, most of the depreciation's already been done. And more often than not, if you can find some good mileage for the amount of years that it's been on the road, it's a good steal. And if you happen to buy a more experienced, kind of car, it'll be closer to the resale value than one that you buy fresh off the lot and both sell at their 10 year mark. Next up, I recommend buying your cars in cold hard cash. Car payments can be some of the biggest problems you have within a household. By paying a monthly bill, that could be a considerable portion of your paycheck and is not something you can just easily just hop out of. It causes a lot of financial strain between you and your partner. It's best just to save up as much cash as possible, then go shopping for a car that you can also negotiate the price of, pull the band-aid off one time, and the car is yours. You don't have to pay for any sort of monthly bills ever again, hopefully. Remember folks, money problems are some of the biggest cause for divorce out there. So the less that you have, the better off your marriage could be too. Look at that. Solving money problems and marriage problems. Ooh, double thread over here. It can also dance the salsa. Oh, los retes tripales. But if you find yourself at a point where you need a car faster than you can save for one, really take a consideration at your car loan. They are far too easy to get into nowadays, similar to student loans, and they could take you for a spin. So really review it, really take your time. And if the salesperson says that they, the car could be gone tomorrow, every single one of them do that, don't listen to them. The car's still there, you can ask how long it's been on the lot, and it's probably gonna be there for a little while longer. And if you're considering getting into a car loan, I really recommend trying out this little experiment right here. What you wanna do is ask how much the car payment will be, then over the course of about a month, save up that much money. If you can't do so comfortably, you can't afford the car outright. Just go to something smaller. That way, you at least will be a month ahead on payment whenever you start or can get a good considerable down payment. And at the same time, you could prove to yourself that adding on another monthly burden is something that you can carry. 
Lastly, I really recommend prioritizing a smaller car. Another egregious sin within the car community. You want something loud, you want something fast, or you want something big, or you want something all three. Another triple threat, my mortal enemy. But unless it's something that will really make you happy, then going for a smaller car is more affordable and economical. That's why they call them that, folks. Anything bigger than what you need to go from point A to point B, consider that more as a toy. You can have a big, large, jacked up truck. I mean, trust me, I'm down here in the South. I know how important that be. But at the same time, you can be using that to have fun with and view it as such. Cars, again, are a tool. Don't trick yourself into thinking that they are an investment or an asset. Cars can be classified as assets, but not exactly a good one. Going for a smaller car will be cheaper in terms of gas, maintenance, and even insurance. So really consider that option when you're looking for a car. And that will do it. Cars are a bit of a tricky subject, again, because of how necessary they are and the sheer amount of things that is required to keep up with them. But it's something that if you plan out right and you think about in advance, you could really come out ahead with them. Hope you hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and leave a comment down below. What's your dream car? For me, personally, I would just like a Mazda Miata. It's weird, I know, but it's just one of those things that it just looks fun, it just drives fast, and it can be convertible. So, and it's at the same time, it's fairly economical. With that, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you around on Friday, where we got another great video planned.